forged by fear, chaos, and pain. We all know who Bruce Wayne is, we're aware of how he became the vigilante, and we're pretty familiar with the who's who in his insane rose gallery. This is Christopher Nolan's legendary iteration of the Caped Crusader. Welcome to another episode of Film on Point, and this is a quick run-through analysis of The Dark Knight Trilogy. The Dark Knight Trilogy is a masterpiece. It's a monument in the filmmaking industry. It stands tall as one of, if not the greatest, cinematic trilogies of all time. The Dark Knight Trilogy is an elegant, deep, dark, brooding, and grounded version of the Caped Crusader. Beginning with Bruce's transformation from the rich kid to the self-righteous Batman until the supposed demise of Gotham's savior. The Dark Knight trilogy didn't just redeem Batman's status from George Clooney's god-awful Batman and Robin, but it cemented Batman as the greatest hero in modern times. Plus, it didn't have bat nipples. The Dark Knight trilogy isn't devised to be a cohesive three-part narrative. Each movie can stand on its own. Every movie is a self-contained story that is developed by their own supporting cast and plot, thus making each better than the predecessor. Well, maybe not for the case of The Dark Knight Rises. Derailing what a common superhero movie is all about, Christopher Nolan's vision of The Dark Knight doesn't involve the destruction of the world or an extravagant third act fight sequence. It's a story with relatable and mature content, making corruption, anarchy, and terrorism as the real adversary. Each of those is manifested through Ra's al Ghul, the Joker, and Bane, respectively. Not only does our hero save Gotham by fighting the rogues, but also fighting the very idea each of them embodies. They say that a hero is only as good as his villain. Garnering worldwide recognition, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker isn't just perfect, it's as terrifying as it is insane. Joker doesn't plan for world domination, unleashing a biological weapon, or even blowing up a city. In fact, the Joker doesn't plan at all. The Joker just wants to watch the world burn, spreading anarchy all over Gotham City and demolishing Batman's ideals. Haunted by the events of the Dark Knight and living in the memoirs of Harvey Dent, Batman must step down to maintain the mirage of peace and order that is keeping Gotham City intact. The Dark Knight trilogy ends with Batman rising up to the embodiment of terror and injustice. From the death of Bruce's parents, Nolan concludes his vision on the remarks of Bruce Wayne, not just Batman, overcoming any physical and psychological adversary through sheer willpower alone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and subscribe button for more updates and videos. I'm Captain Mike, and this is Film on Point. FG Studios.